we are still looking at the information processing model. We are going to focus on short-term memory and working memory. They are different things. Keep this model in your mind, standard memory model or the information processing model. We talked about sense memory, a lot of stimuli, one to three seconds. Let us look at short-term memory, and working memory is included in this. It is technically different. Working memory and short-term memory. And again, you're going to see this model lots and lots and lots of times. Short-term memory is passive. It is a holding pen like the desktop working space on your computer. Its capacity, it can hold about seven plus or minus bits of information or data for about 15 seconds. For example, um, notice that license plates numbers are about seven digits. It's easier to hold on to seven digits, as well as locker combinations 222. Two, two. It is seven digits. Now here's something interesting. You can hold seven plus or minus, most people, that would mean some nine, some five, in your working memory. What you have to do like you get that phone number, you don't want to forget it. Also, phone numbers about seven minutes. Maintenance rehearsal. That means you say it over and over again, repeat the number so that it goes into long-term memory. That's called maintenance rehearsal. Elaborative rehearsal is when you elaborate on it or expand or associate it with something else. When I'm trying to remember a locker room combination, I do two things. First, I associate the numbers with a weight class. Instead of 3-0, I use 30, and I think of 130-pound wrestler because I used to coach, and I can associate that with different wrestlers. So, maintenance rehearsal, elaborative rehearsal. A little bit more of this. The magic of paper. Paper is one of the greatest learning tools ever invented because as you are reading or listening, you record things on that piece of paper. It takes the stress off short-term memory, and it enhances it. It expands it. You can see everything in front of you. Now, if you're learning new information, if I'm reading something brand new, I take notes so that I can see it. My brain doesn't have to hold on to as much when I'm processing. So it takes the stress off. That's why it is so important as you read for this class and others that you take notes. It helps you understand and see and make connections. It expands short-term memory and alleviates the stress, lessens the demands of it. I also use what's called chunking. Chunking is instead of remembering all these digits, I chunk them together. I, it's hard to remember all those numbers, but 78, 6, 89, 14, 7 is much easier. By the way, when you are purchasing something on the telephone with a credit card, easy way to process quicker instead of saying 7238, say 7238, 4269. That's an example of chunking. It's much easier to remember little chunks of information rather than digits. Now remember, this short-term memory, this is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is eight bits of information. This is four bits of information. Four is easier to hold than eight. Working memory, now remember, short-term memory was the passive part, just the holding pen. Working memory is the active part. You do something with it. You're analyzing, you add data, you organize, you reconnect data. And something related to this, an important term, metacognition, is a form or something that your working memory does. Metacognition means thinking about thinking. And it's usually it is used in the act of comprehension. You stop, do I understand? Does this make sense? Do I need to read this paragraph again? Hmm, so you're thinking about your own thinking process. That's something that occurs in working memory. Automaticity is any process that you can do without thinking. This is related to procedural knowledge. The knowledge becomes automatic. You don't need to think about it. Automaticity allows us to do more things better. For example, 
when I drive my stick shift now, I don't have to think about going and using it has be I've it's become automatic. So it enables me to perceive more I am a much safer driver. When I was learning how to play guitar strum, at first I had to think about where each individual finger went and the strumming pattern. Once that became automatic, I was able to perceive and process more information. Same with a wrestling skill. When I used to coach, we used to go step one, step two, step three, go through the steps. We would drill every day over and over again so the students didn't have to, wrestlers didn't have to think about the steps. When they got into the wrestling match, it became automatic. And they're out there wrestling and didn't have to think, hmm, what should I do? Okay, I think I will step here and I need to do this. All right, it became automatic. In the same way, in our reading instruction, everything relates to something. One of the problems with a skills-based approach, a phonics-based approach to learning to read, a purely phonics-based approach, now I believe phonics is important, but people who think that you learn to read simply by processing one letter at a time are making it more difficult. Can you hold seven letters in short-term memory, or can you hold one word? We want our students not to process individual letters, but to process words and sentences and ideas. Efficient readers do not attend to every letter. They see the shape of the word and they use as few letters as possible. They use gestalt top down to see what makes sense. All right. That is a lot of information in a short amount of time. Hopefully your short-term memory is processing this. But you have the advantage of pausing. 